Hello, I'm Mixed Miles and Mower Man, and welcome to my channel. In this video today, we're going to be working on this uh, Mountfield um, SP42, which I picked up as part of a job lot um, off of my dealer. Um, this had a lawnmower tag written on it, which said starting and drive, is what it said on there, with the man's name on the back of it. So I'm assuming it had a starting issue and a drive issue. In the last video, you would have seen that I pulled this engine over and it started pretty much first pull, even without pulling it pretty much. Just as I pulled the pull cord up towards the, um, the connection there, it started straight up. So um, it doesn't have a starting problem. I don't know why um, it went in with a starting issue uh, or maybe it, it, they, they got it um, running but couldn't get the drive to run. However, the drive still does not run. So I bought the machine today just to see if it is a quick fix or if a gearbox is gone. The machine isn't actually that old. I'm struggling to find a a tag on it. They normally come with a tag with mount fields on the side here, but I'm not actually seeing a tag. So maybe maybe they hide them now. I'm not quite sure, but there's, there's no tag on it. There's normally a little tiny tag on there, but uh, that's gone. Um, so hey ho. So yeah, we, what we're doing today is we'll get this um, lawnmower in the old, up on the old bench like it is now, and then we'll have a little look to see um, why the drive has actually stopped. And if we can get the drive to work, then uh, this will in increase the value of the machine when it goes forward for sale. But before we get on, I have got one or two announcements. I bought some spark plugs myself because uh, I ran out. So I picked up some NGK B2LMs. And somebody bought me off my Amazon wish list a Active Shield, it's called. Um, I saw these on, on a, I think it was just on, a, on an advert, either on Facebook or YouTube, one or the other. I can't remember where I saw it now. But these are really, really uh, compact little tiny face shields, and I thought these would be brilliant for um, for doing my grinding. I have got one, um, but it's quite big and bulbous. Um, it comes with a little filter underneath here to capture any bits and pieces. But all you do is put it on. You may not hear me. Put it on. Stick your head in there. And it completely seals up uh, your whole face. It's completely fog-free. Does, doesn't fog up. It's got some kind of resistant plastic there, so it doesn't fog. But you, you can now grind your blades uh, with, with next no problem at all, and it's, it's completely sealed. So that, that's good, I like that. Um, so whoever that was, if that was you that sent me um, this face shield off of my Amazon wish list, thank you very much indeed. If you'd like to put a comment in the comment section below if you want to do so, or if you want to remain anonymous, it's up to you. But thank you very much for that. I should look after that. That would be right handy for when I'm doing my grinding work because uh, it's really, really small and compact and doesn't fog up. So that's brilliant. Let's put it down here out of the way so it, don't, it doesn't get scratched. So that's good. And also, thank you very much to Harold who gave me a super thanks. Here's his channel here. Um, he gave me a super thanks. Um, he gave Riley Boy uh, 50 Australian dollars just the other week. I have, no, I have put it in, in another video. Um, but I'll put it right at the end, uh, that's not right, I love to do it right at the beginning so people can see who, uh, who it's come from. So thank you very much Harold, much appreciated buddy boy. He does videos and live streams, I think he's in Australia. Um, he does a few lawnmower videos here and there, which is cool. Um, so this this one here, we're going to look at this today, as I say, this little Mountfield SP42, because it runs but there's no drive, and went, it went into a lawnmower shop with the same issue, so I don't know why the lawnmower shop either couldn't fix it, um, maybe it's too expensive, I have no idea, but... It's in a mixed mower shack today, so we'll have a look at it today, see if we can't get it to run. If we can, we'll be quids in. If it's your first time you're watching Mixed Mowers and Mower Man, hit the subscribe button or whack the old bell. Set your notifications to all, that way you'll be told next time I upload another video. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty, and let's have a look at this Mountfield SP42, to see if we can't get it to run and drive. So the first thing we want to do before we work on any machinery is make the machine safe. Now the dead handle is out already disengaged anyway, so it can't it can't stop that way. I'm just going to remove oh, the HT lead, put that out of the way so that we definitely can't get a spark off of that spark plug, and therefore the machine is now safe to, to tip up on its side. Now, most people say don't tip up on its side, make blah 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 blah, but sometimes you just have to do these things to get it to work. And if you're in a lawnmower shop, you send, you send your machine to a lawnmower shop, that's exactly what they're gonna do. They're gonna tip it up onto its side to, uh, to inspect what's going on, okay? Right, let's bring you guys in. <clears throat> Bit of a closer inspection. And uh, the gearbox is all intact, as it should be. There is a spring just here on the gearbox, which allows a gearbox tension. Uh, the belt is, is located on the back pulley, where it should be. So you've got a pulley here, pulley there. 
that's been located. I can see that the, this blade has actually moved round. It's, there's a few bits just hanging out, hanging out the bottom. So this has actually hit something in the in the past, or um, uh, someone hasn't put it on right. But we should have two little tabs on here, which are not in my eyes essential, essential. But uh, this has this just gives me information to say this has moved. Something something has changed. So that could be possibly why the driver is now not working. So I think it has hit something. I'm willing to sharpen this blade up very shortly as well before I put it back over. But there's no rust in here. It all looks quite good. Uh, but the actual, <coughs> the actual um, uh, belt is in place on the back. Let's just have, let's just remove this, um, remove this nut here. We're going to remove that nut and take the blade off. See the two little divots there broken off, see? They are sacrificial. But in my eyes, it's not, that's not life or death. As long as you like, it can't move un, uncentrally because it's got a little bit here, you see? As long as it goes back on roughly right, then that'd be fine. It's not, I don't think they're life or death, but other people will, will argue with me. Okay, so straight away, I can see we're, we might be on a winner here. Let me bring you in. Now, on the back here, you, the, the, the belt is there. I can see the belt, but the belt is not actually on the pulley itself. I can see that, okay? So hopefully, if we can slip this belt back over, that boss gonna come off for me or not? No, it won't. No. <clears throat> so, you can now either take, take the, um, the boss off or remove the, the cover on here, okay? Or you can just try and fish, fish the, the belt back on. You don't have to remove the cover. So what I do sometimes is I get a pair of fuel hose clamps. Um, you can use long nose pliers or things like that. They're, they're all pretty much the same, but I would like quite a thin pair of fuel hose clamps if I can get them. I've got two or three pairs here. <laughs> I use fuel hose clamps only because um, they got like they got like a like a like a ring on them. See, so what you can do is you can put your clamps in. Grab hold of the belt with the clamps, that's got it. You can then literally just pull the blade out and rotate the engine and fish that belt back into place. Turn it all the way around. It might pay to, to remove the spark plug at the same time, but I think I've got mine. And you can then remove that. And now, Yeah, so now that belt is now back in situ. Let me show you. You can now see the belt is now, I'm trying to bring that light around a bit more for you. Try that. That belt is now in situ where it should be on the pulley. You see that? So now it's in place. So the belt has slipped. Now that could be due to a number of, number of reasons. Number one reason, you get so much grass build up inside here. So just having a little look, it actually doesn't look to be like there's a lot of grass in there. I reckon you might have hit something which just jarred it and threw the belt off. So now the belt's back on, I'm gonna go and sharpen this blade up uh, very quickly with my new face shield and uh, grinder. Sharpen the blade up and then um, give the deck a bit of a clean off and then we'll come back, um, give it a fire up and if we have, let's just see if we have or haven't fixed the, um, fixed the drive on this machine. If we fix the drive and it's reliable, then we're good to go. If it's not reliable, we may have to undo these, these three bolts here. One, one, two, three. Um, take this cover off and then um, change the belt for a new belt. But uh, these aren't gonna be the easiest. You could absolutely jam the stuff. It'll be like a Phillips in there by the looks of it. I'll say they're Phillips. Yeah, Phillips in there. You can then just remove, remove this cover and that'll give you a full, full uh, full view of the belt inside. Um, but I don't think we need to do that. So let me get this blade sharpened and balanced very quickly and I'll come back to you once I've done so. And then we'll, uh, we'll put it back together and then go for a fire up. Okay, blade's now sharpened and balanced exactly as we want it. So brand new edge on there and on there and also doled off on the back as well, just there and on just there. So now I can put the blade back on. As I say, it doesn't really matter if it goes there, because it is balanced here and here, so it doesn't, it's not the end of the world, but you want to just have it just about right. Put it on so, it, so it's, it's where it should be, just like so. I have seen some people put bolts through here. I wouldn't recommend doing that because it should be made of alley. <clears throat> but as long as they're on there nice and tight, 
I don't see the big issue. <coughs> so it's a lawnmower, it's not designed for <coughs> scientific space station research. Well, that's on there with a half inch impact, that ain't never coming off unless you get a half inch impact. <coughs> so, with the blade now on, on the right way as well, note. We're going to tip the lawnmower back up onto its wheels. And say so somebody actually threw this lawnmower out. This was actually thrown out and sent, sent to the scrapyard um, for, uh, for recycling. Because it was a bad starter, apparently. And also um, the, drive, the drive had failed. But the big question is, did it fail because the gearbox is broken and that's what the lawnmower company, whoever, where, wherever it went to, uh, diagnosed it as? Or um, did it get sent to a scrapyard because possibly it was misdiagnosed or someone didn't even look at it? Because if this drive system now works on this lawnmower, <coughs> then technically that would have been around about, you know, 15, 20 minutes work as per this video. So it wouldn't have cost a great deal to get this machine up and running. But we shall see in a minute. Um, so blade sharpen and balance. I'm going to put a new spark plug in it. I'm going to check the oil. <coughs> uh, air filters will be fine. Um, I'll give it a bit of a tie, a bit of a clean up. And then we'll come back in a bit. I'll meet you outside. We'll go for a fire up. And the, the big question is, have we now repaired this lawnmower just by simply putting the, the belt back on the pulley? So I am just removing the spark plug and it's come with a ST K7 RTC. These um, are not a very good plug indeed. Um, these are called a torch plug. The TC stands for torch plug, okay? So this is a torch plug and um, not much good. I'll be putting these, uh, uh, replacing this with a Briggs and Stratton one, overhead valve spark plug. The torch plug, in my opinion, only good for one thing, smashing windows. And I should be replacing my spark plug with a 992304 Briggs and Stratton spark plug, overhead valve one. Uh, these are a much better plug in my opinion. You can't, the NGK also do a version as well, which are just as good, but they must have a smaller nut on these guys. So we're gonna put that into there. And we'll do that up. Nice and tight, but don't hang on it. Just enough just to compress, compress a washer. HTD to go back on. I've got to check the all guys. Um, air filter will be fine because they're only foam filters anyway. Um, and like I say, I'll meet you outside. We'll go for a fire up. So I'll get a bit of a clean up, check the oil, and I'll be back to you guys outside in two ticks. And we'll go for a fire up and see if we have or haven't fixed the drive system on this little lawnmower. Right, guys, let's um, get a bit of rocket fuel in the old machine because she's a little bit low. I've checked the oil, all's fine. Um, I don't think it's done a lot of work, this machine, you know. I don't think it's done a great deal at all. So, let's put a bit of fuel in there. Just a smidgen. I'll give it a bit of a tidy up. A bit of a clean. Just so it looks apart. So the big question is, does it now start? And does it drive? That's the question. Because if it doesn't drive, I've got to take all the drive gearbox out and turn it into a push mower if the gearbox is no good. Because the new gearbox is around about 120 pounds for one of these, so it's not worth doing. So it's an automatic choke. Let's give it a pull. Bear in mind, it has been tipped up on its side. So first pull for a poor starting machine. So it runs A1, but does it drive? Boom, drives. Fantastic. Well happy. So there you go. If your drive system has stopped, first thing to check, check your belt. 
Okay, so there you have it, guys and girls. One little mount filled SP42, now all up and running and driving. The question is, why was it sent to a lawnmower shop in the first place to be diagnosed? And uh, for, for what at price did they tell the customer that potentially that machine um, was no good because it went to landfill? So I'm assuming the customer then went off and bought a brand spanking new machine. I have no idea. Put your comment in the comment section down below what you think actually happened uh, at the end of the day in that, in that story. But uh, that took no more than five minutes to fix. Once it was diagnosed that the belt had slipped off the, um, off the main pulley, I put it back on and it now runs and dries as it should do. So if your lawnmower has now stopped driving, the first thing to do, I would say, is check your belt. Check your belt, make sure that the belt is on the, both front and back pulleys. If it's not, fit it. If you find that it's very, very slack, then just look up your make and model of your lawnmower and buy a replacement belt and just replace a belt. It's very, very simple. Just make sure guys and girls, safety first. If you are tipping the lawnmower up or working on lawnmower, for that fact, just remove your HT lead so that your lawnmower cannot start whilst you're mucking about underneath where the blades are. Otherwise, you'll be missing digits. If this is the first time you watch a mixed mother murder man, hit the off subscribe button, not whack me old bell. Set notifications to all, that way you'll be told next time I upload another video. I look forward to seeing this episode of Mixed Mother's very, very soon, but until then, don't forget, much more importantly, take her easy.